It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us for our monthly update on the Kingdom Builders is Mary Jo Parrish. Thanks for being here, Mary Jo. Thanks for having me, Kyle. What's going on with Kingdom Builders? Well, we are going into our eighth month, so that's pretty cool. It's hard uh, to believe that it's only been eight months, I know, actually. I know. <laughs> it feels like it's been a really long time, like well, in a good way. I, just that you've grown so much in such a short amount yeah. of time. Yeah, this month we have St. Vincent St. Charles, but we launched at Sacred Heart on August 27th, so we're excited about that. Yeah. yeah we're excited about that. Slowly migrating west. Yes. Yeah, my goal is to get in South Bend. Uh-huh. We have some structural work to do sure. before we move out there. But yeah, for sure, I want to get out to South Bend as well. And we mentioned the conference yes. last month. Yes. So our conference, which is going to hold 2,000 women at the Memorial Coliseum, is October 3rd of 2020. So we have some time, mm-hmm. um, but we're already looking at vendors and speakers and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. good. So how did the July gathering go i thought that we would have less people there in july and you know because everyone's on vacation or whatnot and we did not we were a packed um both locations so that was really good our theme was faith or fear you may only choose one Uh you know so either you live in faith or you live in fear but you're like you're trying to straddle both it's like it's too hard so you know i like go through all the bible verses for the month so i went all of through all of july's bible verses and the story that stuck out to me was the Martha and Mary story. So I'm going to read it real quick. It's just really quick. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me, which I love that quote, like she or her being bossy. That's so <laughs> right. Right. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha. You are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. And that's from Luke chapter 10. Um, so in that thing, in that Bible verse, it kind of, when he says, Martha, Martha, um, if I'm mad at one of my kids, I don't say their first name twice, right? <laughs> like, right. you know, and so when Landon lost the snake, right. the four and a half foot python in <laughs> yes. our house, I was not yeah. saying, Landon, Landon. I was uh-huh. saying, Landon, Rain. But I was like, Landon, Rain, what in the world? You know. So I, that was my frustration. So Christ is not frustrated with Martha. He like is loving her where she's at. She's just He's just trying to show her where the better part is. So uh-huh. Martha, Martha, Landon, Landon, what are you doing? This is, this is what the better part is. And then kind of praying with that, that Bible verse was just so strong because so much of um, our lives as women work doing the fear and anxiety thing. Am I going to have enough for retirement? Can am I going to have enough to send my kids to Catholic school? You know, um, uh, should I go to, back to college? All these different things that are going on in our head. But the three things that I feel like for women are holding us back is lack of order, lack of sight, and lack of trust. Hmm. Yeah. Lack of order, lack of sight, lack of trust. Yes. Can you like break down, what, what do you mean by lack of order? Um, so like with Martha and Mary, Mary chooses the better part, but what about Martha and all her hard work? That Bible verse, come to me all you are labor and burdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I've read that, Matthew 11, it actually has made me angry in that past because it's so heavy. It's not light. Like, it's hard. You know, I have 10 kids, but even if you had three, I remember feeling overwhelmed at one, you know, one kid, like, oh my gosh, this is not easy. This burden is not light. There's always more work to do. And this is where I think it gets in, is that lack of order. Satan says, just unload the dishwasher. Just make that bed. Just change that diaper. Then you can pray. Hmm. And as soon as we believe that lie, because that's what it is, it's a lie, all of a sudden our day is disordered. It's disordered because we have to start with prayer. And keep coming to him throughout the day. And then God enlightens us and like shows us what things actually are priorities. And so it changes the order. Prayer can't be an afterthought, but a daily priority. So that when we are walking in his order, the burdens do become light. So St. Teresa of Avila says, don't imagine that if you had a great deal of time, you would spend more of it in prayer. Get rid of that idea. It is no hindrance to prayer to spend your time well. I had one of our builders Hmm. contact me and she said, You know, Mary Jo, like when you were saying you have to pray 10 minutes a day, I was like, I can't squeeze in 10 minutes a day. She said, she was embarrassed to tell me this, but she was like, I can't squeeze in 10 minutes. 
And she said, and so I just said, well, listen, if she says I have to do all squeeze in 10 minutes, and she said, and I found that once I squeezed in 10 minutes, I was able to get more done than when I wasn't praying at all. So you would think you'd actually lose time, but right. you don't because you gain order. And that's what we desire. So as a, a mom with mm-hmm. a, a gaggle of kids, right. do you, are you able to chronologically like actually make prayer the first thing of your day? Or is it, all right, the chaos happens and I schedule in a break at some point in, as early as possible? Right. When I wake up, I feel like I'm dying. I am the most (laughs) bratty morning person in all the world. I The first thing I do is ask for grace. Uh Like, Our Lady, please bestow your grace upon me because I can't do this. I have to roll out of bed and sometimes just go down to my knees and just start praying there because I am like so weak. I am Uh pathetic without the Lord. Um, So I, that's mine. Like I start the first thing when the alarm goes off. I'm like, no, (laughs) I never wake up and think it's a bright and beautiful day. (laughs) And for those who do, I'm like, I want to be you, but I'm not. (laughs) That's not my design. Yeah. Um, but then also like throughout the day when the Lord is calling to me and I'll say, Mary Jo. And so every time that we hear him calling to us, Hey, stop and pray. That's him tapping us on the shoulder. That's not a coincidence that we have that thought. That's grace. Mm. That's him like tapping our shoulder. So for us to like hold our finger up and say, in a minute, in a minute, not right now. That's Uh like, it's like offensive to God. So sometimes you can only just give him a quick hug. Like, I love you, Lord. That's Uh a prayer. And sometimes you can actually stop and stay a decade or continue doing the dishes and stay a decade. Hmm. Um, but the important thing is, is just to come to him throughout the day. All right. So go back to your list. Lack of yeah. order. The next one was lack of sight. Lack of sight. So this quote from Ephesians, it's one eighteen. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory and in his inheritance among the holy ones? It's changing our sight. So when our sight is built on his love, it's different. So my husband and I have been married 25 years. When we first went on our couple dates, I wasn't like, hey, when we get married, we're going to financially struggle for like 15 years. (laughs) Uh, Also, I'm going to birth eight babies. We're going to adopt two out of foster care house. We'll constantly be trashed. You know, I'm going to get stretch marks on my body that look like a ravenous bear has attacked me. You know, like you don't stop and like say all these. dream. Yeah, that's not, you know, that's like not attractive, right? You don't start with the crosses. You start with, oh, he's handsome. Like, Mm -hmm. and you like talk to one another and you slowly fall in love then your relationship, then the crosses that you are called to carry in your relationship become sweet if you unite them to the cross of Jesus. So, you know, getting up in the middle of the night with the baby, like for me, oh my, you got, I told you before, like I struggle like with sleep, like that is a love language for me. Like I need sleep. So getting <laughs> yeah. up in the middle of the night, I'm like, no. But then all of a sudden when you're nursing this teeny tiny perfect little human, it's like, oh my gosh, the cross becomes sweet. But if you tell someone who doesn't love a human, you're going to be getting up in the middle of the night. You uh-huh. know, for like a year. Uh-huh. And people will tell your baby will sleep through the night after three months. That is a lie. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a <laughs> mystical baby. Anyway, that they seem like, oh my gosh, that seems the so hard. I wouldn't, yeah, I would never want to do that. They're not looking at the joy that comes from the love. They're just looking at the cross. Yeah. So that whole, that Bible quote from Luke 10 27, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Love changes our sight. When we never, mm. we stop looking at the crosses, we just see the joy and then the crosses become sweet. So allowing the Lord's love and relationship with the Lord to change our sight. And then that leads to the lack of trust. Right, right. So, that. so overcoming that last fear of lack of trust. So this can, this can be for men or women. If you would meditate with yourself being about four years old because you're able to like communicate at that that age and you kind of know what's going on i have a four-year-old right now they're so cute (laughs) um still a little bit chubby and just (laughs) ornery and so creative um and you hold your hands out to the god the father and he lifts you up into his lap and he just desires to hold and love you there he's not rushing you away he's holding and loving you he's listening to all your stories and your concerns He's smiling down, taking it all in, the beautiful shape of your face, the sound of your voice, every part of you, every talent, weakness, wound, sin, every detail of your design, because you are his creation formed in his love to reflect his love. You are his beloved child. And that's a relationship he desires to have with every human being. So people hear me say that and they're like, oh, that's the thing between you and God. I'm like, no, that's a relationship between every child and God that he desires to have with them. He desires you to rest in Him. So from the diary of St. Faustina, he says this to St. Faustina. So St. Faustina and Jesus have like a conversation back and forth. And he says, my daughter, 
Why do you not tell me about everything that concerns you, even the smallest details? Tell me about everything and know that this will give me great joy. Okay, that gives him great joy. Hmm. Faustina answered, but you know about everything, Lord. Okay, don't you ever think that? Like, why would I tell you when you already know? Right. And Jesus replied, yes, I do know, but you should not excuse yourself with the fact that I know. But with childlike simplicity, talk to me about everything, for my ears and heart are inclined towards you, and your words are dear to me. So if that feels strange, like that relationship of just trusting the Father and telling him everything, I think sometimes it is because we have an earthly father wound. So our earthly fathers are called to reflect our heavenly fathers. And when they don't, which is, they're not perfect, right? right? All of our earthly fathers have flaws. When they don't, it can cause like um, us not to trust our heavenly father. When I pray with women, and I know this is true for men as well, it's one of the most common wounds there is, is an mm-hmm. earthly father wound. So how do we move forward? The first thing I would say is forgiveness. So when people say forgiveness, I think sometimes like the claws go up like, oh, forgiveness, you know, like it's almost scary. Forgiveness doesn't mean whatever your father did or didn't do was okay. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that that's okay. It just means you will his good. Mm -hmm. You will him to get to heaven. And that's okay. A lot of the stuff that I'm about to say comes from the book Unbound by Neil Lozano. Mm -hmm. And the Bible verse from Luke, it's chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Okay, the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy and nothing will harm you. So we know that Satan can't read our thoughts. So that's a new thing for you. Satan cannot read your thoughts. He can lay things in your mind. It's your choice whether you entertain him in your mind. Your word that is spoken is super powerful, especially when you're baptized. You come under the authority of God. You are a child of God. So your spoken word is powerful. So if you look upon like some of the spirits or the lies that the enemy has gotten in your head, and I have a list of them on my website, which is buildingthroughhim.com, but sometimes going through speaking out loud, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my father for not loving me the way I needed it. In the name of Jesus, I forgive my father for not showing me physical affection. That's a really common one. Hmm. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of unworthiness. So a lot of times because we weren't shown that the love that we needed as children, We can feel the spirit of unworthiness. And then just I praise and thank you, Jesus, for your design of me. So kind of going through these things. When I met with Father Dan and I was talking about these wounds and just addressing them so that the Father can heal them, and I said, and I also had this image in my head sometimes. I think it's the Holy Spirit will lay an image on my head, but I'm not sure what it means. So I had this image of Joseph of Arimathea. So it started back in October of him carrying the dead body of Jesus to the tomb and cleaning this body and loving Jesus when he was dead weight, like so heavy. And I said, but then I thought, Father Dan, like, I know he was carrying the body of Jesus, but if you take it back further, how did he get him down? Like, how did he get him down off the cross, Hmm. right? So he's nailed in there. Do you like pull the hands through, you know? Mm -hmm. And the the fact that, sorry, no, I'm not going to apologize. The fact that our Lord would allow himself to suffer in life so deeply and then to be further mutilated in death for love of us is like so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Father Dan was like, oh, actually, tradition tells us he's like a brilliant theologian. Tradition tells us that Joseph of Arimathea used pliers. And took his time, like a like a surgeon would take, wow. like to- gently pulled out each one and like gently did that. And he said, and also, there's a painting that I think you might like. And he shows me this painting, and it's on our website. I'm gonna pronounce it really wrong. It's La Pieta de what do you how do you think you say that? <laughs> I don't know. Villanana Avignon, but sure. it's the the Pieta. It's a, another version of the Pieta. And he said. And they take the body of our Lord and they lay him on Our Lady, but his head rests in John the Beloved's lap. And John the Beloved takes each thorn and removes it gently from Jesus's head. And so when we go to that place where our own wounds are, our own sufferings are, we allow Jesus to take our head and then gently to the most tender and painful spots, pull each thorn out 
ever lovingly and ever gently so that he can love us and allow us to be healed. And that's really what the trust is, is, is going back and just saying, you know what? My earthly father was not a good reflection of my heavenly father, and I'm going to address those wounds, and I'm going to allow Christ to, to pull them out, and I'm just going to forgive, and I'm going to move forward because I desire to trust the heavenly father with my life. So powerful. People should check out the website so you can see the picture and the, the prayers that you mentioned, things, mm-hmm. buildingthroughhim.com. Also, the video of last month and the past months yep. are all up there all on the website. All on there. Mm-hmm. What do you have planned for August? Um, oh, I'm really excited about this one. It's from Luke 12, 49. I have come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were already blazing. So we know that we were created by the divine artist, but how do we know our unique purpose in this life? So come and join us. Listen to concrete ways of how to embrace the fire of his love in your life and claim your inheritance in his kingdom. You are beloved daughters of a glorious king and Jesus has come to set your hearts on fire. He awaits you, ladies. Come build with us. All women are welcome. You do not have to be Catholic. You don't have to be a member of St. Vincent, St. Charles. If you're a woman seeking the love of the Father, you are welcome there. You're welcome. You just come and receive. It costs nothing. All right. Buildingthroughhim.com. Uh, also, you've got the Facebook group. Yes. You can join. Yes. Too, so. Yes. All right. And our, and our dates. So oh, there's yeah. Thursday, August 8th is at St. Charles. I'm sorry, St. Vincent's. Thursday, August 8th, St. Vincent's. Wednesday, August 14th at St. Charles. And then our launch at Warsaw at Sacred Heart is August 27th. And we're always from 7 p.m. to 8.30. And we stay right on schedule. You'll be out in an hour and a half. All right. All right. Great. Thanks, Mary Jo. Thank you.